Hey, this is one of those channel wrap up end of year looking forward to 2022 videos that you've probably seen a hundred of by now. First of all, congratulations! We made it! It's officially January 1st, 2022. Hooray! Uh, I will be mostly improvising ad libbing. I've got a couple of notes here to keep myself vaguely on track, but um, yeah, we'll just see how this comes out. And uh, I guess the headline is that I will be closing the Discord and Patreon as of today. Uh, those will no longer be a thing. Uh, however, the channel will still be here and videos will still be here. And I think that needs uh, probably the most explanation out of any other changes that are happening to the channel this year. So first and foremost, a massive thank you to uh, my two patrons, Chocolson and Crow. They've been with the Patreon pretty much since it opened earlier this year and have solidly been uh, my two patrons throughout right the way up to its closing today. And um, yeah, it boggles my mind. Like there have been some months I'm like, ah, Disney Plus, I'm paying that again, $7.99. I'm like, you look at what Disney Plus is offering month on month compared to what my YouTube channel puts out. And to think that someone would put money towards my YouTube channel month on month um, when comparatively, I think the quantity and quality compared to something like a Netflix subscription. Um, but then that said, I do back other creators' patrons, so there must be something to it. There must be something there. But, uh, yeah, no, a massive thank you. Um, still feel like I don't deserve it. So, um, yeah, no, 100% grateful for that. So, why close the Discord and the Patreon? comes back to very selfish reasons of why I do YouTube videos in the first place and um, what I want to get back to. So I want to step away from YouTube's metagame, YouTube's algorithm, YouTube's analytics, because there are two phases uh, of doing a YouTube video. So phase one is, you know, I get the idea for a video, I get the spark, I get really excited, um, and then I have a lot of fun with the creative process, and then I put a video out there. Uh, and then all of that positive energy turns negative as I become this bitter, entitled, toxic, jealous, just nasty person who looks at YouTube's numbers and analytics, which tell me that I'm failing not by my standards, but by YouTube's standards, which are imposed on me. You know, oh, this video isn't doing well, that video isn't doing well, why aren't the numbers higher? Um, why aren't the numbers higher than other people who are in sort of your area? I I hate that side of YouTube, it really brings me down, and I don't like the person I become um, when I get involved in that side of things, so I'm just not going to get involved in that side of things. See, here's the thing, Patreon numbers, YouTube numbers, they are important if you want to do YouTube as a living, and I don't want to do YouTube as a living. I am over seven years into an instructional design career that I really enjoy, and YouTube has always been a hobby. Well, that's a lie. When I first started YouTube back in 2009? Christ, yeah, 2009. Uh, so if it was going to happen, it would have happened by now. But um, it was looking to be a job. It was looking at, okay, I'm stuck in dead-end retail, I'm stuck in dead-end call center, um, get me out, get me out, get me out, get me out. Maybe that's a viable avenue. And I certainly see that in a lot of other YouTubers who have gone full-time and fair play to them. But, you know, I was about seven and a half years ago lucky enough to be right place, right time for those design role applications to move from, we like you, we like your portfolio, uh, we like the test brief you did, the person we've hired is you five years from now with more experience. Um, and thankfully finally got over that hurdle and got my foot in the door. Uh, and now I am that person with five years experience. So um, no, we live comfortably on my salary. Um, I enjoy what I do day in, day out. I don't need YouTube for an income. So then there's the other side of it, which is doing YouTube for recognition, for ego stroke, for getting invited to conventions and that kind of thing. And don't get me wrong, that would be nice. But at the same time, I look at it and think, well, my family loves me. My friends love me. 
do I need the validation of people online who, for the most part, I will probably never meet in person um, and probably never spend any degree of time with in the real world? And, um, you know, no, I, I don't think I do as much as I do appreciate, you know, the subscriptions and the comments and everything else. And it's really nice to see that people do connect with the content. Um, I don't think I have that need anymore. Whereas in the past, I certainly had this weird sense of needing a place to belong. And um, I think I resolved that issue in my head. And again, a lot of this comes back to me and mental health and just anxieties and being a, a mess. But um, I think I'm, I'm finally getting to a place of resolving a ton of that. And that's not to say that community hasn't come into and played a big part in 2021. Um, so the Gaming Brit has always been an ally and a friend of mine um, going back years. And he's always had my back, always been up for video chats. Um, just a really, really cool guy. Uh, he introduced me to a group of British YouTubers, uh, many of whom are <laughs> far bigger and far more successful than me, but, um, you know, it was uh, Video Game Storytime, Dan Root, Mark Flynn, Writing on Games, Hot Cider, Mark Brown, Eurofug, uh, The Snakerer, and um, it was really interesting on a few counts. So, you know, one, they have been um, just this really welcoming, friendly group. I love spending time uh, chatting with them. And what was strange is that in some cases, a lot of the hang-ups I have about YouTube only get worse <laughs> when you get bigger. And, you know, things like sponsors and their deadlines and stuff start getting involved. And, um, you know, I think I always stuck to full-time employment rather than self-employment or freelance because doing what I do now, I could probably make twice as much if I were to go self-employed or freelance instead of being, you know, a salaried employee. But the risk involved in that, the lack of stability and security, um, you know, I've got a family to support, uh, I've got a mortgage to pay, I kind of, I really like my safety net that comes with full-time employment, I like having, you know, pension and, uh, and those kind of benefits too, uh, holiday, you don't get that doing uh, self-employed and freelance. And you certainly don't get those things uh, doing YouTube. And um, it seems like YouTube at that level is a lot of stress. Uh, for all of the rewards that I don't doubt are there, it is a lot of stress. But I would like to give uh, all of those guys and gal a massive thank you for just um, welcoming me with open arms and giving me... Um, a really nice place to just talk about games. And similar to that, um, the Game Apologist, Nick, um, whatever you want to call him, uh, his Discord has become pretty much a second home. I spent far too much time uh, in his Discord, and everyone there is great. Um, and it feels like... So when I was maybe 13, 14, I did a lot of RPG Maker 2003, and I spent a lot of time on a forum called Piquitas. And there's only one person watching who will get that and know what I'm talking about. Hi, Ocado. How you doing, buddy? And um, you know, that felt like where I belonged, which was really important, especially at that time in my life. High school was rough. And um, I've not had that feeling again for a very long time in terms of an online community. Nick's Discord uh, has given me that feeling, or at least the closest thing to that feeling again, which is really bizarre. I thought that was sort of like a flash in the pan thing um, that died when Piquita's forums died um, and when the RPG Maker community moved on from RM2K3. So that's been really weird for me. I should probably do an RPG Maker video at some point. And... Um, yeah, so I kind of resolved, well, I don't need YouTube for that. So rambling here, what do I need YouTube for? And I think it's the case that, you know, those best friends do live five hours away. Um, my wife is into gaming to a degree, but, you know, not probably not as much as, well, 
look at the background here, you know. And um, I quite often need to just get this excited energy out. This, you know, oh, I really want to talk about this game. Let me just blah, all about this game. Or, oh, this event has happened in gaming news. I need to blah, just vomit words everywhere about it. And um, so obviously pre-COVID, pre-pandemic, when we were at functions or events or parties or whatever, um, someone would, you know, accidentally casually mention, you know, Sonic or Dragon Ball or PlayStation to me. And they'd be like, oh no, you pressed the Sam button. And like half an hour later, I would still be rambling on. The person I'm talking to does not care. They've switched off. It's going over their head. They were like at the surface level. I'm all the way down here in the iceberg with them. Um, and someone's had to go over to my wife and be like, you need to rescue Paul right now. Get over there and rescue Paul. Um, and, you know, I could just see her face from across the room like, oh, he's, he's doing it again. He's done it again. Sam, come on. Come on, let's pull you, let's, let's get you, <laughs> let's get you some food, let's get you a drink, let's come over here, leave that person alone. Um, I think that is probably the best outlet that YouTube can be for me, and sort of like when I have those moments and that, ah, and, you know, there is no one immediately around, I can hop on and, and do a video and work on a video, and just try not to look at or care about the numbers. Um, so Patreon, um, you know, that sort of thing gives this pressure of, oh, you have to have at least one video out a month. No. Um, with Patreon gone, I will no longer be promising at least one video per calendar month. Um, what I will be promising is videos on topics I care about at the time I want to make them, and uh, hopefully to a much higher quality as well. So. If we look at, I know I don't want to look at the numbers, but uh, this sort of validates why I'm leaning this way as well. Uh, so this year I did, I believe it was 17 new videos. They brought in around 30,500 views, give or take, which would be an average of about 1,800 views per video. Now the channel overall saw 79,000 views. Uh, this year. So most of those came from my old Dead Rising videos, which means my old content is outperforming my new content. And of those 30,000 odd views for the new content, uh, 10,000 of those came from my video on Sonic Omens, which was like this point in time thing. And actually, if you look at my top three videos, including the uh, PlayStation Store closure, you know, Don't Panic Buy, um, they're all sort of these moment in time, controversial, hot takes, and um, they all have, like, the most clickbaity uh, titles and thumbnails of any of my videos. And then you get to my actual proper reviews, including uh, stuff like the Ratchet and Clank video, where I busted my ass release weekend to get uh, what I felt was a really good review out. Um, and I don't think it's even broken 500 views at the time of recording. And... It's this weird thing where YouTube's telling me, look, the stuff that was the least effort in, in terms of hours, um, is actually the most successful stuff. And YouTube, in general, on the site as a whole, seems to be pushing this junk food mentality. And uh, I, that's not what I want to do. That's not what I want to participate in. Um, and yeah, I think by disengaging with that side of things, I can concentrate on what I do want to do instead of what I feel like I have to do, um, which I think is an important distinction to make. So what can we expect? So Sonic Heroes, absolutely 100%. Uh, I am a good ways through editing it. If you're on my Twitter, you'll be seeing regular updates for how I'm doing with editing that. Um, hopefully that will be out within a couple of days of this video. Um, I'd really like that to be out within a couple of days of this video. Um, there are, I want to do uh, some more discussion videos. Uh, for example, I want to talk about whether, A, the pricing of physical retro games at the moment, because is, the UK isn't as crazy as the US, but whew, the pandemic has uh, certainly pushed those prices up uh, to a degree that I'm personally quite uncomfortable with. But also, sort of, looking at, as we go to an all-digital future, as I look at having limited shelf space, although there is, I think, room for about 980 games on the shelves in here all in. I did count. 
I did the maths because of course I did. And um, just looking at now that I've got Everdrives and ODEs and all the rest of it, how often do I actually reach for the original cartridges and discs? And also, who benefits when I buy, say I spent £300 on Panzer Dragoon Saga? I haven't. And just in case the wife ever watches this, I have not spent £300 on Panzer Dragoon Saga. We do not have Panzer Dragoon Saga. Okay. Uh, I did spend 300 on a Satiator, uh, which is, oh, conveniently, the box is here. Um, and that allows me to play any Sega Saturn game uh, from a micro SD card. And it makes me think, okay, so if I had bought Panzer Dragoon, who would the money have gone to? Not Sega, not the original developers, not the publishers. Um, it would have entirely just gone to a reseller who uh, has either sat on it for years or is flipping it after finding it cheap at a car boot or uh, getting lucky on Facebook Marketplace. And um, do I really want to fuel the fire, be part of the problem? Or am I just sort of... I mean, the shelves are nice and all, but who am I impressing? And the ODE solutions are more convenient. And it's just, there's no point making that video now. I've just said everything I want to say, haven't I? Um, no, I think I can do it more in depth. But I would like to do uh, maybe some more videos like this, where it is unscripted. Probably a little more editing than you're getting right now. But um, And just have those chats about things that are, are on my mind, about gaming in general. Maybe delve a little bit into anime, but... Um, yeah, or maybe those discussions would be good streaming material. I know I keep saying, oh, I mean to stream more. Um, to be completely blunt, it is just practicalities. Uh, the PC and the screens are over here. The consoles are over there, which is more distance than it looks on camera. Uh, and I much prefer to be looking at that screen while playing games than this screen. Um, although it is set up to mirror, so that should work in theory. And... Um, Completely lost my trial of thought now. Oh yes, streaming. Uh, the other side of it is just practicality. So I'm lucky that I've been able to ramble this long without being interrupted. Because, again, wife and kids, I do have a family here. Um, they do come first. And I can never guarantee that I can sit for a set amount of time or, you know, at a set time and date. So I could never... I don't think I could ever have a regular streaming schedule if that makes sense. But, um, yeah, so Sonic Heroes, yes. More discussion videos, yes. Uh, Shadow the Hedgehog, yeah, sure. Uh, at some point. Maybe not straight away, because it's 11 different endings, and that I'm probably going to have to piecemeal out the recording and take a lot of notes as I go. Um, that's going to be a uh, an interesting one, for sure. But I also... I think one of the main things that made me reassess this was I sat down recently to play through Grand Theft Auto 3 properly for the first time. So uh, when I'd previously played it, it was mostly on friend save files and just mucking around with like the riot code and stuff and um, never actually did the missions and the story mode proper. Uh, I didn't start doing those until I think Vice City was the first Grand Theft Auto I actually did the story missions and, and completed, you know, saw the credits at least. Um, so these past few weeks I've sat down and I've played through Grand Theft Auto 3. And just as I was wrapping up Portland, the first island, uh, and moving over to Staunton Island, the second one, um, my brain was thinking, you should have been recording this. You should have been recording this for a review uh, because you have stuff to say about this game. Um, maybe you should start a new save file. And actually that, that guilt, that sense of obligation... Um, that sense of waste, in a sense, um, was detrimental to my enjoyment of the game. And I don't want to make a video on every game I play. Um, you know, I cannot have those feelings ruin my enjoyment of my hobby. Um, so, no, there are no plans for a Grand Theft Auto 3 video. Yes, I have finished the game. Yes, I actually enjoyed it much more than I thought I would. Um... It's I, I might jump straight into Liberty City Stories next because I want to spend some more time in that world. It's uh, I'm kind of glad that pseudo-sequel, well, it's more a prequel uh, from what I'm told, exists. But 
it is going to be more sporadic. Um, it is going to be, you know, you might not see a video for two, three months. But when you do get a video, I think it's going to be a damn good one. Uh, and it's also going to free me up to spend more time on other hobbies as well. So, you know, I draw comics. I think I've done three pages this year. Uh, that's insane. That's like one page every four months. Uh, my art has really... It's not like a bicycle. You know, if you... It, you don't just hop back on and remember everything. Your skills do degrade if you neglect your art. And I've certainly neglected it this past year. Uh, likewise, I am developing an indie video game, a top-down shooter. And there will not be videos about that on this channel because I'm now a member of a podcast on indie game development that's monthly that I'll leave a link to in the description. Um, and on there, I'm showing progress every month. Um, so it frees me up to spend more time on that indie game as well. Um, it just lets me be a little more free. And I think the benefit for you guys is going to be that you see a happier, more centered me. And I think you're going to get more energy uh, and conviction in the videos that do come out as a result. Um, so yeah, that's going to about do it for me. So... Again, a massive thank you um, to Chocolson and Crow for their support uh, these past... What's the Patreon been up for? Seven, eight months? Wow. Okay. So, a massive thank you uh, to those guys. A thank you again to The Gaming Brit, Video Game Storytime, Dan Root, Mark Flynn, Writing on Games, Hot Cider, Mark Brown, Eurofug, and The Snakerer. Um, and a massive thank you to uh, The Game Apologist and his Discord community. Uh, for giving me a second home this year. Um, I'm really looking forward to 2022. I'm looking forward to feeling much better in myself. I think this uh, step away from YouTube, this distancing, um, is long overdue, and I'm glad I finally reconciled that in my head. Uh, look forward to Sonic Heroes, and... Um, yeah, I guess the, the last thing to say is that this would usually be the point where I'd be like, oh, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, I don't have to do that anymore. It's sort of like this weird thing that, you know, it's a sleazy, salesy push that you sort of feel like you have to do because if you don't tell people to subscribe, if you don't tell people to comment, they won't. And then that lack of interaction um, hurts the algorithm, which then hurts how many new people see the video. And um, no, I don't. I don't have to do that anymore. So from now on, I will not be asking people to like, comment, and subscribe. I will not be pushing a Patreon and Discord at the end of each video. And just, like, not having to do that obligatory crap that I don't like doing in the first place, just that in and of itself is such a relief. Uh, and that already feel like, having that realization now, already feels so much better and reinforces that this is the right decision. Um, so yeah, thank you very much and look forward to what comes next.